Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? So, you know, we're talking about one through seven, Jacob's Ladder, the Syzygies, and, you know, I wanted to move on with this, but it's just kind of been rattling around in my head because, well, it's the foundation of a lot of our, our, our present knowledge. You know, it's really down there where we start questioning what are numbers, you know? We often rely on mathematics as unquestionable because it's so reliable. Um, however, I don't think most of us, because I sure hadn't until recently, sat down and asked myself, what, what is a number? You know, like, how do you define that and how is it attached to reality? You know, because, well, it's not as, as uh, simple and transparent as one might think if, if they just glance at it, you know, like if, if you want a, a, a challenge to what I'm saying, you know, so sit down and try to define, you know, literally define like what's the number two or what's the number three or what's number one. And I don't mean like simple, like, um, well, three is just, uh, you know, three ones, you know, or because <laughs> the next question is be like, okay, well, what's well, you still haven't asked, answered what three is. You just took one and, and multiplied it by three. So how do you even define one? Anyways, you'll find out very quickly what I'm trying to get at here, and I'm not doing a very good job at describing it. But I wanted to touch down on this because, once again, we're talking about practical spirituality. And before, before moving on, I just thought I'd pass along something that kind of opened up to me, as it were, right? And so we were talking about one through seven and the syzygies, and seven was the synthesis of the six. The six was a bifurcation of the three. The three was was God and man, and how that manifests to us is is mind, emotion, and body. Okay, so <clears throat> what well, we looked in we looked at the, those numbers, and we saw how we could. They are equivalent to the seventh heavens, okay? Because, well, when we found out seven is the synthesis, it's judgment, it's actually the present moment. It's always now, because we're dealing with eternity, okay? So we're removed from eternity, and that's what we're struggling with. How do we become present? How do we, how do we, how do we become the, a channel for the, for the Holy Spirit, as it were. Another way of putting that is, how do we manifest our divine pe potential? And so, <clears throat> well, there's this. that's what this is talking about. And so, well, I numbered these out and as, as we talked about, one was full potential, okay? So that's, that's what we've got up here. Greatest divine potential, okay? And then it moves down through six, and this was kind of like, well, what does, these the syzygies that we were talking about really represent in our personal lives right and so the way that i i see it is we have divine potential then you have circumstantial potential then you have within circumstances you have possibilities within possibilities you have probabilities within probabilities you have capacities and then capabilities what the hell does that mean how is that useful at all okay so well, all of this starts with faith, and I, everybody hates the word faith because it's, they think that you're abandoning your brain, okay? But no, in truth, everything is based on faith, and you can sit down and think about this too. We're really caught in a materialistic society, and we think that numbers are just straightforward, one for one, and, and, and we, we take things on faith all the time. You know, like numbers, you know, we don't even know what these things mean. Um, and so a, a, a part of our operating life is faith because we just don't know it all. We can't know it all. And in fact, even things that you know, if you look at them, you'll question yourself, right? Um, and so because we don't know it in, in its entirety. And so at some basic level, we're stepping out on faith. We're saying, okay, this is my best guess at what this is. I have to take action, so I'm moving forward. That is faith. Um, but it's not a faith abandon of, 
of your of your mind you know you do the best that you can with your mind but we all come to a point where well we've ran out of time you know we got to eat we got to sleep we got to move and so we got to do something with our best guess and that's that's what faith is okay so understanding that principle we come we number one is faith because we want to align with divine potential right and so so in order for us to even believe that we have to just kind of go okay i trust that there is a greater potential that wants good for me okay so that's that's really step one you know and and um and so well what is that so so how does that work so once we realize that then we can ask ourselves what i did was as i aligned questions that kind of go with these categories that align with the numbers one through seven as they're defined well, by themselves but also uh in in the the gnostic system as well as well just 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 well yeah like i said you know what the numbers actually mean you know we've just lost we've just lost uh We've forgotten what what these numbers mean. So, what are the questions? So, once we accept that God, that there is a divine potential outside of us, well, then we can ask the question, "What am I serving?" That's 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 number two, man. That's like right off the top. What am I serving? And because if you if if you believe in divine potential, well, then we're not full we don't know everything and so we come underneath something greater than ourselves so we are serving something else so this is an acknowledgement of that and it's getting a little bit more detailed i would say well what is it that i'm serving the next question here is once we once we kind of outline what we're serving then we can see okay well whatever it is that we're serving once we we isolate that or kind of narrow it down then we'll see you know what what it is and so what's what its purpose is and so so after we've defined that we can ask well how can we and that this comes back to possibilities what what needs support within that so we can look and see what we're serving and we can see how it could be it needs support in certain areas you know and so then we can ask well, what can I offer for support? So we can notice something that needs support, but doesn't necessarily mean that we have something that can support it. But usually it does. It may not be much, but there may there's usually something that we can do. Okay. So and once we once we answer that question, then we can answer we can ask, well, what are my limitations? You know, how can I support? But you know, what at some point like. So I might be able to support you or somebody else that's struggling or whatever, you know, and but but if I give everything away, then I won't be able to support myself. And so those are my limitations. So what are my limitations? You know? And then the the, the last question, well and that comes with our capacities, right? What are our limitations? And and then last of all, how can I be most efficient? And that's our capabilities within our capacities right and this is so well this lines up with this over here <clears throat> so on on the scissorgies I've, I've taken these these definitions and I arranged them like the scissorgies and so on God's side we saw divine potential possibilities and capacity these are all defined by God we we can look at them and understand what they are but we don't really have any control over it it is what it is right so that's what it is it is what it is so we want to know what it is right and then here's what we may be able to participate to a greater or lesser extent you know and this really aligns with our emotions mental and physical as we talked about you know what are our circumstances what are the probabilities and what are my capabilities so <clears throat> anyways i thought that was really useful and I'll, I'll, I'll end it with this. I wanted to just touch down on this because what we're really looking at, if I can just move this without it falling. Okay, what we're really looking at here is 
Well, like I said, we're talking about faith, you know, and this is manifesting the greatest potential, divine potential at any moment. You know, this is always at play. And so the more, the better we've answered these questions, the easier it is for to get out of our own way so that divine potential can manifest. You know, we can see how we're not moving efficiently, right? So <clears throat> that's our ego getting in the way. This is how we destroy the ego by asking these things. So we can, we can be the true self, not the ego self. Now, I said that started off with faith. And so these all line up with different kind of principles, as it were, uh, practicing principles. So this is top one's faith. And then you move into circumstances, which is acceptance, because we have to accept our circumstances. Once we've accepted our circumstances, we can acknowledge the possibilities. Once we've acknowledged the possibilities, then we come into um, an understanding of our probabilities, meaning we, 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 we're getting with the program. We're understanding how these things are organized. There's not much we can do about it. We're wanting to get, wanting to be like a surfer and, 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 and catch the wave. It is what the wave is coming. It is what it is. And so. So this is how we're getting understanding. We're getting on our surfboard and we're going to use that momentum. Okay? So, well, then, then what happens is we have capacities, which is really defining our purpose. You know, because, well, like I said, capacity is kind of defined prior to, to anything that we can do. Um, and so, so that's, that's our divine purpose. But what we can uh, engage in is, is this capability capabilities and that's how we can be most effective you know and so we want to arrange our days in a way that we are most effective and that's always shifting right because life is dynamic and so that creates an empowerment to service because now we're plugged in now we're out of our own way and the Holy Spirit is able to really manifest to, to the greatest extent in our lives because we've balanced and synthesized these things so we're moving into the seventh heaven all right now, let's just say we don't do that though. Well, and I, that's just why I wanted to make this video too because we're really in a time where we're, we're just inundated with fear and pounded with fear. And a lot of people see, say, I don't see what the big problem is, why you're so afraid of what's coming down the, the, the turnpike, Chris. And this is, this is what I'm afraid of because how can we deal with life and reality properly on, on an aggregate scale if we're not looking at these things. And what do I mean by not looking at these things? Well, if we're inundated by fear, that is the opposite of faith, okay? So we're closed off to our divine potential, right? So that moves fear in our circumstances creates resistance. When we're resistant to our circumstances, we reject the possibilities. When we reject the possibilities, we're confused about the probabilities. When, when we're confused about the probabilities, we get frustrated with our capacities. And in the end, what we, with, with, in, in six, we, and down here we became uh, empowered to service. But here, we are service to power. We are service to power, and um, and we see this in people's lives. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, right? If this is the Holy Spirit moving into our lives, this is the Antichrist blocking the Holy Spirit from entering into our lives, and it all starts with fear. Fear is useful, but it's supposed to be an indicator to point out which we should be looking at so we could get in more detail about it. We shouldn't be living in fear. You know, it's something, it's like a dummy light to point at things that we need to address. And our society desperately needs to address some fundamental issues, basically how we prioritize our lives, how we even interpret reality. So what I'm trying to give you here is a methodology that's been passed down from the ancients and is ingrained in most of the world religions that I can see, but it's, it's we kind of lost the interpretation of these symbols. So anyway, something on my mind, I don't know if that's useful or not. I, I know it's useful, but whether you employ it or not is, is, is your business, and uh, I just wanted to provide it to you. Hope you have a good day.